All right, so your first lab is going to be identifying minerals. And normally you would have um, a number of mineral samples in front of you to identify, but uh, well, because of the way things are right now, you get to look at some pictures of them and uh, work on identifying them. But I thought I would show you how it's actually done. Now, first of all, you're going to be given, uh, this is posted on D2L, a uh, handout about identifying minerals. And in this handout, it's going to tell you some of the same things we had in lecture, like what a mineral is, and then some of the characteristics we use to identify minerals. It will give you some illustrations of uh, some of the crystal shapes that these minerals take and remind you of various other types of characteristics that are used when identifying minerals. Now, it also gives you an example of different kinds of cleavage, since that's one of the characteristics. And then you're going to have these charts that you use to identify the minerals. So first of all, I want to show you how we um, look at these different characteristics of the minerals, and then I will show you how to use the identification charts. So let's start by looking at color. In lecture, I said color is not a good way to identify minerals. Because, for instance, you can have these two minerals, which are exactly the same color, but they're different minerals. Or you can have these two minerals. They're the same, but they have different colors. Now, that's not to say some minerals aren't good for color. Every now and then you'll have a special mineral, like this one, that's always going to be bright yellow like that. But for the most part, you do not want to identify minerals based on color. You want to use other characteristics of them. And one of the other characteristics you can use is called streak, and that's the color when it is powdered. And the way you, you figure out the streak is you have one of these ceramic plates, and then you rub the mineral against it. And it will leave behind a streak that might be a different color from the mineral. So this mineral is really a black color, but it leaves this reddish brown streak. Or, for instance, this mineral is kind of a black-red color, and it leaves behind a yellowish streak. Let's see if I can get a better streak on there. This nice little pale yellow streak. So streak, if a mineral has it, most minerals the streak is white, but if a mineral has a colored streak, that can be very helpful in identifying the mineral. Another thing that's helpful is something called crystal form. That's the shape the crystal takes. This, for example, is what's called a hexagonal prism. Hexagonal means that it has six sides. Prism means it's elongate. And this one happens to be capped with a pyramid, a little point on the end of it. Um, there are other shapes that you might have. You might have cubes or dodecahedron, which are 12-sided figures, and things like that. Now, luster is another important characteristic. And in this lab, the important lusters to remember are metallic, which would be like these two minerals. Notice how this one looks very silvery. This one looks like gold. Those are metallic. You can compare this to a non-metallic mineral. Non-metallic simply means it does not look like a metal. It can be sparkly, but it doesn't look like gold or silver or bronze or something like that. Now, another difficult thing that, to identify minerals by, but very, very important, is something called cleavage. Cleavage is how a mineral breaks. Minerals, remember from lecture, um, have a crystalline structure, right? This repeating arrangement of atoms. And sometimes in that crystalline structure, there are weaker bonds. So if you break the mineral, it's going to break preferentially along those weaker bonds. 
And that's what we're seeing right here. Hopefully you can see these flat surfaces. Those are cleavage surfaces where this particular mineral broke. And some minerals have no cleavage. Some have one surface, one plane of cleavage. Um, that can be up to six planes of cleavage possible. This particular sample has three planes of cleavage. You might be thinking, well, but I see six flat surfaces. I see one, two, three, four, and then five and six. Well, remember, repeating pattern. And since this is parallel to this, those are the same cleavage plane. They're the same zone of weakness in that crystal structure. So this has one, two, three planes of cleavage. These, by the way, do not meet at 90 degrees. This particular sample also has three planes of cleavage, right? One, two, and then three. But this one, those planes meet at 90 degrees. Other samples might only have one plane of cleavage. Notice this sample right here, we can actually pry it apart along this flat surface. So we would consider that one plane of cleavage because it has one zone of weakness where it likes to break. So make sure that you pay attention to cleavage, but remember, not all minerals have cleavage. Some minerals, when they break, there are no zones of weakness, no places where they will preferentially break. So then we call how it breaks fracture. And one type of fracture you might encounter is this, called conchoidal fracture. Do you see how it's a smooth but a curved break? That's conchoidal fracture. Other times, rocks, or sorry, minerals will break um, and they just have a very jagged, irregular surface. This is a good example. There's no flat surfaces, and this is also fracture. It just simply um, broke in an irregular way. Other characteristics of minerals that are important include hardness. Now, to test for hardness, you have two tools with you. You have a fingernail and you'll have a piece of glass. And uh, for example, we could take this mineral here and um, using Mohs hardness scale, which goes from one to 10, my fingernail has a hardness of two and a half. So I try to rub and scratch my fingernail against that. Nothing happens to this mineral. So I know it is harder than two and a half. This glass has a hardness of five and a half. So I can take this mineral and I can scratch it across the glass and notice that scratch it leaves in the glass. That tells me this mineral is harder than five and a half. Some minerals you encounter, you will be able to scratch with a fingernail. So this particular mineral is going to be softer than two and a half. And so simply with a piece of glass and your fingernail, you can narrow down the hardness of different minerals. Now, so there are other characteristics of minerals that can be important. Uh, some minerals smell certain ways. Sulfur always has that rotten egg sulfur smell to it. Some minerals taste special. This mineral right here, if you would lick it, it tastes salty. Some minerals um, are effervescent. So we're going to take this mineral here and we're going to take some dilute uh, hydrochloric acid and we're going to take a look at what effervescence is. We take a drop of this hydrochloric acid and do you notice the bubbles growing on the mineral? That's effervescence. Not all minerals will react to acid like that. So if you have one that does that, that's a very distinctive property. 
Um, we also have some minerals, uh, I can't really video this, but some minerals feel heavier than others when you pick them up, that's specific gravity or density. And, uh, and then last but not least, some minerals um, are magnetic. So I have this nice little magnet here, and notice how it sticks to that mineral, right? And not all minerals are going to be magnetic. So these are just some of the different um, uh, characteristics of minerals that we will use to help identify them. So let's see how this works then. Let's say you happen to have this nice mineral here. All right, if we look at it, the luster is going to be metallic. It looks like gold almost. So you would then go to the mineral identification chart that says metallic minerals. And then you will follow the steps. So step one is the hardness of the mineral. I'm going to put this down here. So let's see if this can scratch glass. And that left a scratch in there. So that tells me that this mineral is hard. So it has to be in one of this area, right? So then the next thing that I check is the mineral streak. Well, let's get out one of these ceramic plates and rub this mineral across it. And notice we get a nice dark gray streak from that. So that now tells me it has to be one of these two minerals. So let's read the characteristics. We can have one that's golden yellow, tarnishes brown, or another is dark gray to black, tarnishes gray, and is attracted to a magnet. Well, number one, this looks kind of golden yellow, and it's definitely not attracted to a magnet. So this would make that mineral pyrite. So simply by following this kind of flow chart, it helps you identify that mineral. Well, let's see what happens if we don't have a metallic mineral, if we have a non-metallic mineral. Well, you'll notice at the top of the remaining charts, it's either going to say light-colored non-metallic or dark-colored non-metallic. So, for example, this would be a light-colored this would be a dark colored, right? And some minerals have various colors, so they'll be on both charts. So if we have, for example, let's take a light colored non-metallic mineral. Um, let's see, let's find a good one in here. How about this one? This one right here. That one. Okay, so it's light colored, it's non-metallic. What's the first step we do? We check for the hardness. So out comes this glass plate again. Let's take this mineral and let's scratch it against that. And sure enough, I leave a mark in the glass. So that tells me it's going to be on this page. If it couldn't scratch the glass, it would be on the next page. Now we need to look at the cleavage. And this is a tricky one because if you look at this one, there are some flat surfaces. But in this case, the flat surfaces are the crystal shape, not the cleavage. It did not break this way, it formed this way. And this, you saw earlier, I said is a hexagonal prism. If you see one of these hexagonal prisms in lab, they do not have cleavage. So this is going to be a light colored, non-metallic mineral that is hard and it does not have cleavage. So it's gonna be down here in this part of the sheet. So now we have to read the, the uh, uh, descriptions. So we have one that is uh, various colors. It forms hexagonal prisms, so that's a possibility. Here we have one with various colors, and this forms hexagonal prisms with pyramids. Then we have one that's opaque and conchoidal fracture. We have one that's kind of green with a sugary texture, and one that's like has 
P-shaped structures in it, which means little round things. So let's, we, we narrowed this down. The two that are hexagonal prisms are corundum and quartz. But if you notice, quartz says prisms that end in pyramids. See how that ends in a point? If it ended in a flat, this would be corundum, but that ends in a point. So that is quartz. So hopefully this shows you how these flow charts work. Just um, uh, when you're working on your lab and you see the photos of the minerals that I'm providing, I will tell you what the hardness is because obviously you can't check with the streak plate or, or I'm sorry, not a streak plate, with a glass plate or your fingernails. If they have a colored streak, I will let you know that. And then just work your way through this. You might have to make careful observations of cleavage or crystal form or things like that. But take your time, work through those, and remember, you can always contact me if you need help.